Hey, good morning, people. Hope you guys are keeping well. Okay. Um, today is about repairing a hard drive. I'm going to make an attempt to see if I can revive this. I've already taken the caddy off the casing, the enclosure. Uh, it's a Samsung hard drive. Uh, customers brought it in, uh, stating the fact that uh, he inserted the wrong DC uh, power supply and uh, burnt. there was smoke coming out of the uh, drive. So, uh, I've already, just to keep this video as short as possible, I've already dismantled everything. Um, tried running the drive, and sadly it won't uh, engage. It ju just light is just blinking, blinking on and off, on and off on my docking station, basically. So, quite clearly there is a short. Uh, first thing first is that's the PCB on the actual... Uh, enclosure which I've took off and I'll show you under the microscope what the state of that is right so let's uh, as you can see first thing first this is totally burnt out look at the state of that let me just zoom out a little bit well, am I might be able to do that yeah of course look at the state of that So what's going on? Is there anything else? Nope. It's totally annihilated the uh, PCB basically. So it's not worth going through the route of uh, messing around with this basically. Absolutely not. So I'm going to sort of, uh, I'm not going to bother touching this PCB basically. Um, if let's, let's, uh, it's not worth repairing. You can get an enclosure for as little as um, 20 pound, 15, 20 quid. So that is not worth it for me, basically. So that can go in the bin, right? So the enclosure, just make sure there is anything that I need from the enclosure. Nope, that can be abandoned, sadly. So, okay. Right, now let's have a look at the drive. Okay, so the drive PCB so far looks good. All right, just make sure if I can get a. Okay, so let's have a look at inspect the drive PCV. Hmm, interestingly, everything looks to be fairly. Sometimes it can corrupt the, uh, what's this? Hang on. Sometimes it can actually corrupt the, uh, all right, just a, a fiber. Sometimes it can corrupt the firmware. Um, common problem with the drives are firmware corrupt, uh, sticky uh, arm on the uh, platter. Uh, those are some of the common, common problems basically. Right, okay. So uh, th there's no visual damage on the actual board. I can't see anything visual, basically. So all looks clear. Um, now there's two ways around this, basically. First way is to troubleshoot the board. Second way around is to find a refur refurbished working drive or a donor PCB, um, and that should should hopefully resolve the problem. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to probe around some of these areas and just look for a short, basically. Uh, that's what I intend to do. So let's uh, get my multimeter on diode mode. Um, okay. Oops. Just not the. Uh, I'm hopeful that you can see what I'm doing as well. Just the multimeter on diode mode. Red probe on the ground. Um, oops, because to some people the data is a very very sentimental right okay so first thing first is uh, let's uh, i'm going to look at these capacitors there's a capacitor there as well that one tiny one let's uh, zoom in a little bit all right so we'll go off start off with these caps because they're quite that's a ground so one beep means this is on is on the uh, positive line that's the ground. Continuous beep is the ground, basically. 
That's a diode. There's two diodes here, basically. All right. That'll be the ground then. Right, that's the ground because the, the orientation of the diode, that's your marking on the diode, basically. So that should be your ground. Right. So we have a short on this rail, basically. Now it could be this capacitor. I'm going to run into ohms. Let's see what we get on this cap. Six point eight ohms. And that's me sort of shorting the probe out. Let's see how many ohms we get here. Okay, same. That should be so we should be getting something near to this basically, but we're not. We we're actually getting 6.8 ohms, right, okay, so. <laughs> Switch back to diet mode. Right, put on the ground. Right, the both, ca both side of the capacitor is actually beeping. Make sure, just make sure that the markings. Oh, I may have to drop the camcorder. Just give me a sec. There is a there is a lowest level setting on this, basically, from what I remember. And uh, just to get the best clarity from the microscope, I do sort of uh, let's see what's going on. Right, okay. I can't see any sort of... Uh, right, first thing first is I'm going to attack the larger component because that's that's easier to remove. Um, so let me sort of uh, raise the camcorder further up so I've got a bit more working distance. It's an auto zoom focus so it should... Okay, let's, uh, let's keep the things right. Let me turn on my uh, extractor fan. <coughs> I hope... Uh, could do it, suppose it's, it's a lot of the time it's the capacitor that's, uh, they tend, they have a higher failure rate. But also this is, this is, this is a, uh, 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 some form of protection diode basically because there's been a spike of current going through which like for example I believe you probably injected a 19 volt instead of a 12 volt power supply it could have easily blown up the uh, the uh, diode basically so that's that's first thing first I'm going to look at um, let me grab a bit of low melt solder uh, probably would keep you like this so you can see what I'm doing so that's the low melt solder. I've got three reels here. One low melt, one uh, just uh, SN6763, um, and then, then I've got a high quality SN6337 basically as well. So there's this there's, there's handful of various, but also the diameter is small. I've got 0 0.7 millimeter, 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 millimeter. Uh, that's a 0. Very small. I can't remember the size. That this is very small. That like the one in the middle. Um, I think. I think. I think it's 0 0.5 or 0. Point, yeah, I think it's 0 0.5 milli. And then I've got this uh, 0 0.7, which is the low melt, basically. But these low melts are very expensive. I'm telling you that now. Very expensive. Uh, probably onto that. All right, get rid of my right. Okay, so what we're going to do? All right, is to apply a bit of low melt solder. Uh, 
all right make sure you get rid of all the foam uh foam fume from the tip of your solder the iron soldering iron because uh you definitely don't want to be inhaling that basically right i'm going to use my smart tweezer let's, let's heat this up when i say smart tweezer is this that's what i will be using basically um to remove the uh diode all right so let me grab a tweezer as well i really like this uh, pair of smart tweezers basically so right am i too close to the uh yep yeah. that's that's how easy it is to remove now luckily for me to uh, let the fume get collected by the fume extractor I can switch right okay so what I would like to do first of all is to clean the uh, area only because that uh, I don't want to be probing with my multimeter probe and uh, this flux on it basically because sometimes I do touch them with my bare hand so in that area up. let's turn the extractor fan off because it's just too noisy maybe the noise cancellation from this plantronic is uh, helping but uh, right let's uh, let's see where we're at with it now okay oh okay right so the short thing has gone and there's no beep on the capacitor as well let's uh Let's get this onto the center view, right? Okay, let's have a look. All right, okay. So red probe on the ground. There's no beep on this side, which is the positive side of the uh, PCB line, and that's your negative, right? Okay, that's your ground. Right, let's see if there's any abnormal behavior there. No, I'm getting, let's just uh, see if you can see that. Yep, I'm getting zero point 447 on diode mode let's reverse the probe and i'm getting 11.17 that's fine that's that's because it's in circuit that's why i'm getting reading off that because normally you you know how the diode operates so i'm, I'm not going to sort of go into waffle on about how the diode operates basically the current can flow in one direction basically that's 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 the simplest way of explaining it basically um okay so let's check the diode let's move this over right, where's the diode one all right i may have to so much messing around absolutely freaking ridiculous this let's test this first because what i want to do is just confirm that there is there's an issue on it right so it's still on diode mod but on mine this fluke fluke uh, 187 that actually sort of um, you have the continuity on on the diode mode as well basically right so we're getting beep it's supposed to beep in one direction so i'm going to twist this See, there's a bit of a delay, and I hate this. I absolutely hate this. All right. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. That's a faulty diode, that. That is a faulty diode, that. Let's just confirm it. That's right. Okay. And then... One hundred percent. Yep, 100%. That's a faulted out. Now, will the customer be lucky enough to have the data saved? Right, okay, I'm going to keep this for a little souvenir. So let's leave it there for a moment. Okay, I've got tons of hard drives under my desk, basically, um, and around the uh, workshop. Let's uh, pick a few out. Um, just give me a sec. <laughs> It'll have to be a five inch 
Oh my god. It'll have to be a five inch drive. Look at them I've got. Let me switch over to the. Uh, let me move this back into the position. Alright. And. Okay, so these these don't have the PCBs on the under layer. So let me just scrap through. Okay, I've got one here. Now let me see what else have I got. Right, okay, yep, absolutely. On the uh, on the power inputs on the SATA input side of it, there is, there is, uh, or the or the power input side of it, there there is uh, diodes basically on this one. There's one here as well that looks a bit similar. Right. Yeah, probably. Them to look similar, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose one out of the two, which probably be the, the, the one on the right. Let's put these back. Just make sure that these die. Before I do anything, let's just make sure that the diode is not messed up on this board so let's uh, switch over this is the trouble when you're trying to do some component level work and and, and recording as well <laughs> it's all easy said than done basically so let's uh, so that's that's the diode bed probe on ground just the cable look I they hate this tangle, that's the reason why I bought them, but obviously it will tangle. There's nothing you can do about that, right? Okay. Right, so this is the little diode. I want the big one, so why am I probing on the little one? I have no idea. Okay, that's shredding zero point. It didn't get this. There you go. That's what's reading. 0 0.658. Okay. All right. It's reading both ways because it's in circuit, basically. Um, right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this off. Let's uh, let's put the fume extractor back on. Flux. Low melt solder. Solar and iron. Cent centralize that. Got plenty of. It's easy and quicker for the tweet smart tweezer to take it off. Switch over to smart tweezer on the bench bench uh, soldering station. This is the early series of the MX uh, 5000 series. The 5200 um, has got a dual port so you can operate both at the same time. This is you've got to switch between the two sadly. Um, but it's never bothered me. Absolutely never bothered me. I've got two of the same units basically. So uh, it's just one of those things. I've got a tendency of having two of everything apart from... Uh... Nah, I'm not going to go there. Should, should kill me. Right, let's. Uh... Oh well, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's that's right. Okay, excellent, excellent. Let's switch over. Right, let the uh, let the fume. Right, I don't know what's happened there, but I've lost video. Hmm, interesting. Ah, right, okay, don't know what's happened here. I lost video for a second or two, don't know. So that's the uh, die that's taken out of here. This hard drive. Let's do a quick test on that diode and make sure that diode is okay. It's not busted. So... Yeah, I'll give give that silicon mat a clean in a bit, basically. Right. Um, let's turn this off. 
that's how it should be one side it should shouldn't read anything as i switch over the probe it should give me a reading and that's 0 0.665 okay so that's on the red probe and on the other side i've got the black probe okay and i'm getting a reading so if i switch over the probe black yep that's a good diode that okay that is a good diode let me just clean the tip of me uh probe right okay so we're winning now let's uh click give this mat a little clean over there's excessive flux on it basically and remember flux is a cause of cancer always wear prote protective gloves and things like that when you're working especially with flux and things like that guys absolutely must you know i could not emphasize how important it is to wear gloves right okay so just just to re just to recall that remember the orientation of the diode basically the marking was on this side so always remember this basically this is marking on this side the marking on this diode was on this side so you have to sort of put it back in the same orientation basically so that's one one thing to remember um do, 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 do. right okay what do i need flux copper braid let's crack on with this because i don't want this to be stupidly long what i'm trying to do is instead of hours on hours long video just trying to keep things as short as possible this is why you may have noticed that i'm editing video and, and chopping things off that's unnecessarily you know recorded so sometimes i talk a lot so that's just me being me right okay so what i'm doing now is just cleaning the excessive solder from the pads so i can flush fit the uh, diode and then apply solder it will be a much cleaner finish right okay let's put this back and let's get a cotton bud cotton bud in the area okay put that away let's maybe use the other side to, to dry it off yeah i'm going to use my ultrasonic cleaning method cleaning method after all right let's let's put the diode on make sure that everything's okay um let's grab this uh, nipex tweezers remember the orientation of the uh, diode and the marking so the marking is on this side so i'm already orientated the uh, diode wrongfully but before doing so that's the correct orientation let's apply a bit of flux on two of these pads all right so now what i'm going to do is sit that there make sure it's nice and straight i think, I think we're just about right slightly crooked but uh, I think we're there let's grab this uh, soldering unit press this down um, because there's already solder on the pads um, hold it down and the power tweezers that will just uh, don't need to apply any more solder on it remember these are low melt solder but these are good quality solder right these these are leaded high quality solder basically so it's not the bag of shit so all right so i think we're good to go there i don't even need to touch it with the solder fresh solder that will do let's grab me toothpaste and uh, apply the ultrasonic method the toothbrush ultrasonic method right okay so
Come on, I get, it, I get to zoom out. All right, okay. Watch how clean it is. It gets, sorry. Get rid of this fume extractor. That's absolutely utter waste of time now. Look at that. Look at that. It, it, it just literally works like magic. I'll zoom in and show you how clean it is. Apart from these little fibers, look at that. There's not even a single trace of flux anywhere. Even from a perspective of shining, look, the entire PCB. I haven't even touched this area. Look how it reflects and how clean it is. And then as I get near to this side, look at how clean that side is. So you can't even tell that it's been reworked on. Right. Moment of truth. Okay. Let's uh, just make sure that uh, I'm okay on the uh, short side of it. So red probe on the ground. That's B pin. And I'm getting 0.0. .0 0 0.668 not 0, 0.0 sorry 0 0.668 and that's your ground that's perfectly fine okay so we've got rid of the short it was this uh, the culprit was the diode um so now we need to test and see if it's working right just hang in there let me just find a docking station basically i need to find a spare docking station <laughs> Now I'm going to get into a shitload of trouble because I haven't got a spare bench power supply and I haven't got a uh, USB port. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm going to get into some serious trouble now because I'm utilizing the PCs absolutely bombarded with all this stuff I have here. So there's. Right, I'm going to try my best. All right, let's plug this in. Plug the docking station on. All right, and what I need to do, and then to find a power supply. So I haven't got a power supply in hand. Let's try and see what the power, what the voltage is out of this. Basically, I'm going to pull out the microscope light because there's that there's that surplus to requirement. see what voltage we get out of this that's the customer's uh, power supply make sure you go off the diode mode all right so that's a 12 volt power supply that should do the trick for me absolutely so that's off right this will blink red it'll flash red red and then once the hard drive is initialized it should go blue right and I should hear something on the uh, thingy basically. So um, let me just uh, no, go away. Right. Okay. Let me just sort of. Uh, there's a lot of things that's going on at the moment um, on my desk. Let's just think. Let's just think what the best way of. Uh, right. Okay. Never mind. Let's power it up. Screen in red. Do I hear the hard drive spinning? Yep. Yep. It's initialized. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Right. Okay. Um, just open up the my C drive and see if I can see the. Uh, uh, minimize that. That's all the data stored in that Samsung drive. Okay. Um, I'm gonna let me reopen Open Broadcaster, and uh, there should be a. Oh yeah, there it is. There it is. There it is. Let's open this one up. There we go. Yeah, that's the drive. So it's recognised it. And the repair is done. The data is accessible on the left hand side here. Um, that's the drive. And uh, this Western utility is showing that this smart is pass. It's recognized that's a serial number and that's the model number of the drive in a USB docking station. So I'm absolutely delighted that the customer is going to be over the moon with all the pictures and all the stuff that they have on it. Um, 
they will be <laughs> over the moon with it so yep that sorted it out thankfully so uh yeah that's all really guys yes it's, it's a bit of a it has been a bit bit of a troll towards the end uh these computer things and the drive's got to sync and all this business basically so i left it for a bit and uh, it's it's recognized the drive um that's all look after yourself stay well stay safe and I'll, i will catch up with you on my next video peace